are Heather and Paul Christie. And for over 12 years, we've worked with executives and entrepreneurs to accelerate change in every aspect of their business. Because we are in the fastest paced business environment that anyone has ever seen before. So join us for the Evolve to Win show. Hi, and welcome to another Evolve to Win show with Heather and Paul. We're going to be talking today about networking using LinkedIn specifically. And oh, by the way, I was <laughs> just turned on to, and I don't know if you guys know about this. If you like eggnog, I have an eggnog vanilla shake that I just made with a little nutmeg and some whipped cream on top. So, and I am enjoying it right now. Since you brought that up, because I know this is the first time you've tried this, do you want to just give the recipe real fast? Oh, my God. It's just vanilla ice cream, and we have one of those magic bullets. Um, vanilla ice cream, some eggnog, then blend it up, pour it in, put a little whipped cream on top, nutmeg, good to go. It's Sounds a great treat for fabulous. the whole family if you like eggnog. For the whole family. And if you want, you can add, you know, a bourbon or anything else. To What's it, in you yours know? this morning? Nothing. Nothing. Just, okay. just milkshake. Just, just the eggnog. That's a good thing. All right. We are talking about uh, LinkedIn networking. And we did we did a session um, a couple of weeks ago on LinkedIn, that really cool way to connect with people. If you haven't seen that episode, check it out. Um, there is a feature on LinkedIn that allows you to connect with people who are in your vicinity if you go to the people button and then hit connect. So, all right, tell me, what's what's one thing about networking on LinkedIn that you think that people should know? Well, I mean, anybody who's too spammy on any social media is is going is is going to have a problem networking with people just in general. Totally agree. Yeah. So, I think this is maybe the overall premise of this conversation is that when you network on LinkedIn or any other social media for that matter, it's just like you're networking at, a, at an event, right? So the same kind of rules apply. You wouldn't walk up to somebody at an event and, and as your opening line, you wouldn't say, hey, let's sit down and have a cup of coffee so I can review all your financials and, and, and we can talk about ways that you could build your wealth. Yeah. You would not say that as an opening comment to someone. So it always boggles my mind when someone connects with me and the very first message I get is clearly a template form letter telling me how impressive my background is and that they would like to sit down and have a coffee and sell me whatever it is they're selling. Yeah. So let's talk about the the do's on the opposite side of that. So okay. instead of being spammy and, and sending something that's just a template format, make sure everything is personalized. And I don't care if you, you want to get, let's say you want to, you want to get in touch with a hundred contacts. You don't have to do a hundred contacts in one day. Do one a day, but make it a very personalized message and just go for the long run because I've tried it both ways and there is absolutely no doubt. And I've watched a lot of uh, YouTube videos on like emailing, you know, also, you know, and social media. And everyone says the best success that they have is when it's personalized. And it seems obvious, but it is. Well, when you think about it, out of all the connection requests that you get on LinkedIn, I get tons of them. Like, there's such a small percentage that actually have a personalized message that, that says, hey, I want to connect with you. Here's how I know you, or here's how we're connected, or something like that. But I can promise you that I'm much more likely to accept someone if we, not just because we have mutual connections, I accept somebody I'm more likely to if I don't know them, if they give me a personal note and talk about why they want to connect. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, sure. treat it like personalize it. Um, that's a great rule of thumb to keep in mind. The other thing that I would say is please, please do a professional headshot on your LinkedIn. Like I don't care what you do on Facebook, you can get away with having, having fun and doing whatever you want. But what I think about LinkedIn is a much more professional social media outlet. And I can tell you that when somebody, especially if it's someone I don't know, if they send me a connection request and there's no picture, I just say no. I mean, you got, you, you got to put a picture on there if you're going to take the time to send requests, right? Um, most of you obviously already have your picture up there. But use a professional headshot instead of one that, like, your kid took, um, you know, that's out of focus or has you way far back where you can't even see the face. Yeah. Have you seen those? Yeah, and, and make sure that it's up to date. Like I, one of the funniest stories is Heather and I were in, where were we up in, we were in uh, Lake, uh, Lake Galena. Geneva, yeah, in Galena, Galena, up north, was that Wisconsin? We still Northern remember, Illinois. okay, by the way, this is probably 20 years ago, and I knew exactly which story you were going to tell, so yeah. go ahead. So we, so we went up there for Halloween, um, and 
we were hanging out with this really nice guy, and he's a, he was a realtor, and super nice guy, and we hung out with him the entire night. I think we played cards, mm -hmm. and then at the end, he gave us his business card, and his business card literally was his high school yearbook picture. It didn't even look like him. And this guy was in his 50s, <laughs> for sure. He didn't even have a head of hair anymore, and his business card had a full head of hair. You would not have known it was the same gentleman. No. So it was hard not to giggle at that one. Yeah, but, but I'll take a picture. But that them. makes, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. when you can't even tell that, or you can tell when it's outdated, mm -hmm. it really is a distraction in your relationship. There's just something that's off when that happens, when I see somebody's photo that's just, you know, 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously um, needs to be updated. Yeah, and if you live in Southwest Florida and you don't have professional <laughs> headshots yet, I recommend Megan DePiro over anyone else. I'm sure you already know her if you live in Southwest Florida, but yeah, it's worth the investment shot. to work with somebody professional like Megan who will actually take the time and do shots for you that that really help your personality to come out yeah. in your picture too. So okay. that's important. So what else? Um, so another thing that I would say is um, when you think about just networking rules in general, it's not about pushing your agenda, right? And I, and I find a lot of times that when I do get messages, they're always talking about here's what I do and here's how I can help you versus wanting to learn more about maybe what I do and what's important to me, right? So if you are using this tool because you want to sell something to someone, um, please engage in a way where you're actually curious about the other person instead of making assumptions about what they want. Um, so I think it's really important to just remember that rule of thumb that you want to, you really want to make it about them. You want to get to know the other person, ask questions about them. Um, you know, use it as though you're building a relationship with someone, not as though you're a door-to-door -door salesperson and the minute someone accepts a connection request, They've now opened the door and you've got your foot in and now you're going to go for the sale. Yep. Right? What else? What else? Do you have anything else? Um, I think, you know, one of the cool aspects of, of, of LinkedIn is that you can see if people have viewed your um, your profile. Your profile. Yeah. And so you can go and you can look and see if somebody has. If someone has viewed your profile. Yes. And you're going to then, but they didn't ask you to connect. So this right, is kind right, of a right, weird one. It, yeah. this, this one gets just a little bit creepy. And look. What we're saying right now, we're sort of giving our personal um, preferences and what we've learned works and doesn't work in networking on LinkedIn. But by no means are we experts on LinkedIn in particular. When somebody views your profile, if you have professional, you can see everyone who views your profile. But if you just have regular LinkedIn, they just throw you little nuggets here and there because they want you to become a professional member. And when you see that someone has looked at your profile, but they didn't send you a connection request, I kind of feel like if they didn't pull that trigger, it's a little awkward for you to then write to them and say, hey, I saw you were looking at my profile. I mean, what are you going to say? You weren't excited enough to ask me to connect with you, but maybe you just got nervous, so let's connect. I mean, yeah. So um, I, my personal rule of thumb is I do not send a connection request to someone who just happened to view my profile who doesn't send me a request. Unless, of course... I know them through someone or I have some good reason that I could write something personal and uh, and connect with them. Otherwise. Right. Yeah. I've got another big one that's, okay. a, that's a do not do. Okay. And this one, this one is probably my, my biggest pet peeve out of all of them. It's when somebody has um, a LinkedIn software that allows them to get your email address through LinkedIn and they subscribe you to their email list because you made friends with them. Never do that. <laughs> Just don't do that. So if you have an email list, do not put somebody, don't subscribe somebody to that email list unless they've actually raised their hand and said, I want to subscribe to your email list. Um, I don't know if other people do this, but it's just, I mean, my box, get, I know everyone's inboxes are way too full. We have too much coming at us. The last thing you want is to be sent some spam email from someone who you may not know who has just taken the liberty of subscribing you. So... I will at times unsubscribe, but I got to tell you, there are times where I mark it as spam because that's what it really is, right? So just be careful on that because you don't want to be just subscribing people and then get marked for spam. Yeah, and, and so one other one is if you're not currently looking for a job, you should never not accept a recruiter because uh, mm -hmm. you never know what happens. Okay, and so yeah, just except having, recruiters. Yeah, except recruiters. Yeah, yeah, and... 
I want you to think about your LinkedIn profile almost like a resume, right? I mean, these days it kind of is that it's, here's my professional career, here's where I've worked, here's what I do. Um, I think that the way that you describe yourself in your profile is really important to help people know um, who you are, but, but why they'd want to connect with you from a professional perspective. And, you know, that whatever you put on there, it's, it stays on there, like it lives, it's a living, breathing entity. So you really want to stay away from any kind of negativity on your LinkedIn profile. I think that goes without saying, but maybe it doesn't because we still see it here and there, right? Yep. Um, and, and please, please, please consider staying away from politics too. If you want to do that more on your personal page, like your Facebook page, and you feel like that's a great way you know, to connect with other people who have your same viewpoints, then feel free. <laughs> I, I tend to just stay away from politics altogether because you know what happens when you when you go political you're either offending someone or you're getting someone else fired up and then you can lose control completely of your thread um it's a fast way to get unfriended which if that's your goal <laughs> go for it um but if you just want to be out there and keep it professional i would consider staying away from it and look i was a lobbyist for a lot of years so i lived in that political world and I learned to be very nonpartisan in my dealings because it just doesn't help. It doesn't help in a networking venue. Yeah, and Rick says many passive employees don't have their resumes. So their LinkedIn profile is their de facto resume. Yeah, really good point, Rick. It, it truly is your, it is your professional resume online. So use it as such. Um, I've heard people ask before, do I have to put graduation dates on or, you know, the years I went to school because some people are sensitive about that, whether they think that it maybe makes them look too young or maybe makes them look too old. I don't think it's mandatory, um, but I would consider putting the types of things on your resume that you would on there. And by the way, there's nothing better than your recommendation section. I would never solicit a recommendation from someone who I haven't worked with, someone who knows me really well, knows my work really well. And if you're going to ask for a recommendation, which, I mean, can you imagine having testimonials on your resume? That's mm -hmm. what that's like. Um, so if you're going to ask for recommendations, please add a personal note. And you might even give bullet points about the couple of things that they might want to share in their recommendation. So I think getting those recommendations can be hugely, hugely valuable, as Rick said, as part of your online resume. So do you want to sum this up? Do you yeah. remember what we talked about? I do. Okay, I can give like some top, the, the top don'ts that we talked about. Um, so the top things to remember, I would say, when you think about networking on LinkedIn is that it's, no spam it's, it's networking just the same way you would network with somebody if you were meeting them face to face. So don't be salesy. Don't spam people. Don't subscribe people to a newsletter. Um, you know, get to know people. Ask them questions. Start a relationship. Personalize, Personalize everything. It. Get an up-to-date professional headshot. Um, anything else we missed? Uh, except recruiters. And, and ask for recommendations yeah. just from those who really know you well and have done work with you. And if you do ask for a recommendation, make sure you personalize that. So those, I think, are some are pretty good tips. If you have any more tips for us, something that either just annoys you that you want to share, please type it in the notes. Or if you've got a great tip that we didn't mention, some do's of networking in LinkedIn, um, we'd love to hear about it. You can either connect with us at heatherchristie.com or just leave us a message either on LinkedIn or on the, on the blog post. And Rick's blowing it up right now. He says, oh. put common keywords in their LinkedIn profiles. And so what's the best way to utilize their carefully curated LinkedIn group to share your content? Oh, okay. So that's a really good question, Rick. And I think that that goes a little bit beyond the idea of networking on LinkedIn into even like, how, how can I come across as maybe an expert in my field when I'm into a specific group? So this is, this is a great conversation. All of those groups that are out there on LinkedIn, um, you can either start your own group, which is a great way to really build yourself up for whatever your space is, right, within your industry. Create your own group and invite some power players to join so that you can build a group. Um, but the way that you engage in that group, I suppose, is, is, a, is a, you know, a higher level kind of networking opportunity. What do you share? How do you share it? Um, I think when it comes to LinkedIn, making, making it simple is a big part of, you know, how do you get people to read what you're writing? 
Um, so rather than getting really wordy and writing paragraph after paragraph after paragraph, summarize whatever your point is and maybe give some reasons that you, you know, that you're making your point that you're making. Um, but I do think the more that you engage in private groups and in those conversations, especially when somebody's reaching out and asking for help, um, you know, if you've got a group that you're involved with and someone asks for help and you can be the one to very graciously and abundantly share, that is an awesome, awesome way to network. So thanks well, for asking that Thank question. you for joining us for another Evolve to Win show, and we will see you next week.